A time slot for SpaceX's Starship orbital test on NASA's calendar has been removed, adding new uncertainties around the highly anticipated flight of the world's largest privately developed rocket. Starship, standing at 394 feet tall when fully stacked, is designed to fly humans to Mars and the Moon someday. SpaceX has been test flying the upper stage of Starship since 2019, but only to as high as 10 kilometers, 6 miles, in the sky. An orbital flight is a key step before the rocket can fly to outer space. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk and President Gwynne Shotwell both recently said the company is aiming to test launch a fully stacked Starship to Earth's orbit in March. Their estimate was confirmed by a NASA calendar, which as of last week showed a placeholder for SpaceX Starship launch on March 11th. The placeholder was removed as of today. The calendar in question is managed by NASA's Airborne Science Program, which coordinates a set of aircraft to monitor and record spacecraft activities during tests and missions. The placeholder for the Starship launch on the calendar meant NASA was planning to fly a plane along with the SpaceX rocket on March 11th. SpaceX's static fire test of nearly all the engines in its Starship booster earlier this month was the last box to check, before the vehicle's first orbital launch attempt, likely sometime in March, a company official said Feb 21. Speaking on a panel at the Space Mobility Conference here about rocket cargo delivery, Gary Henry, senior advisor for National Security Space Solutions at SpaceX, said both the Super Heavy booster and its launch pad were in good shape after the Feb. 9. Test – Clearing the way for an orbital launch that is still pending a Federal Aviation Administration launch license. We had a successful hot fire and that was really the last box to check, he said. The vehicle is in good shape. The pad is in good shape. Only 31 of the 33 Raptor engines in the Super Heavy booster fired. SpaceX chief executive Elon Musk tweeted just after the test that one engine was commanded off just before ignition and a second shut down early. He later said that the engines ran at 50% of their rated thrust. That led to speculation that SpaceX would need to perform a second static fire test to get all 33 engines or to run them at higher thrust levels. Henry, though, suggested that SpaceX was not planning another such test before an orbital launch attempt. Pretty much all of the prerequisites to supporting an orbital demonstration attempt here in the next month or so look good, he said. The company still needs to obtain an FAA launch license before attempting the launch. We hope to secure that license in the very near future, he said, setting up a launch attempt, probably in the month of March. Once SpaceX performs that orbital launch demonstration, Henry said the company is ready to move ahead rapidly with operational Starship launches. We very, very quickly converge on a system that we can operationalize, he said starting with launches of second-generation Starlink satellites. We have a few that are waiting very patiently to be launched on Starship. Those initial Starlink launches will serve as a test program, he explained, refining the launch and recovery of the two stages of Starship. Somewhere in that journey that will be happening this year, we're going to make a major pivot to the next piece of the human landing system architecture he said, by demonstrating the orbital depot needed for on-orbit refueling of the lunar lander version of Starship. That will provide additional experience testing Starship through the tankers that will fly to deliver propellant to the depot. The nice thing about tankers is that they've got to re-enter as well, he said. We've created this rubric in the next year or two, where we will be able to do a lot of experimentation on that thermal protection system that will allow successful re-entry of Starship. Starship, Henry argued later in the panel, will sharply drive down launch costs. We are on the cusp of seeing an opportunity of mass to orbit go from $2,000 a kilogram to $200 a kilogram, he said. In the long term, costs could further decline to the point where the propellant is the largest factor in the per-launch marginal cost. If Elon gets his way, he said, you're at $20 per kilogram. SpaceX, NASA Delay, Crew 6. That flight, a four-person mission to the International Space Station, ISS, known as Crew-6, had been scheduled to launch from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida early Sunday morning, Feb 26. But after a lengthy flight readiness review, FRR, on Tuesday, Feb and 21, NASA and SpaceX decided to delay the liftoff by 24 hours. The current plan calls for a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket to launch Crew-6's Dragon Capsule Endeavor on Monday, Feb 27, 
SpaceX, close to securing FAA license for Starship launch debut. A senior SpaceX director expects the United States Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, to grant a license for the first orbital launch of its next-generation Starship rocket in the very near future. Speaking at the 2023 Space Mobility Conference, SpaceX Senior Director of National Security Space Solutions Gary Henry also indicated that Starship remains on track to launch as early as March 2023. Six weeks ago, CEO Elon Musk tweeted that SpaceX had a real shot at a late February Starship launch, adding that a March launch attempt appeared highly likely. February is now out of reach, but March may still be a viable target, according to Henry. SpaceX has made significant progress towards Starship's first orbital launch attempt in early 2023. On January 23rd, Ship 24 and Super Heavy Booster 7 were filled with around 4,800 tons, Arc 10.6M LBS of propellant, and completed Starship's first full wet dress rehearsal, simulating a launch attempt up to the moment before engine ignition. Two and a half weeks later, SpaceX attempted to ignite all 33 of Booster 7's Raptor 2 engines. 31 engines ignited as planned, producing 3,580 tons, 7.9 m LBF of thrust, the most powerful static fire test in the history of rocketry. SpaceX and CEO Elon Musk have been relatively quiet about the test, merely noting that Starship may have still been able to reach orbit if it had lifted off with 31 of 33 engines. By all appearances, the test was a spectacular success for SpaceX. 94% of Super Heavy's Raptors ignited on the first attempted 33-engine test. The booster, standing as tall as an entire two-stage Falcon 9 rocket with a payload fairing, then safely drained its tanks. Booster 7 suffered no apparent damage, and SpaceX hasn't removed or replaced any of its Raptor engines, potentially indicating that all 33 are healthy enough to stay on the booster for Starship's first orbital launch attempt. That in itself is a major achievement.